Well, uh, we are so happy to finally be joined by the man of the hour, Xavier Leggett, jumping in here with us on the Garden Trust Hour. We'll get a headset on him here and uh, and jump right into it. Let's get him get him all set up. Uh, X, man, thank you so much for hanging out with us. How you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing fantastic. Talking about a, a great win for you guys on Saturday night, a hard-fought game, and uh, still got that goal of ball eligibility on the uh, table for this weekend's game against Clemson. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. It's a great opportunity, man. Uh, we got one more shot to do it, man. Uh, I hope we get this win this Saturday. X, uh, we were just talking about the atmosphere at the stadium on Saturday, man, and just how loud it was, the, the crowd. Um how, how much do y'all feed off of that energy and the excitement? And uh, how much confidence do y'all have playing at williams Price Stadium? Oh, man, we have great confidence there, man. The fan base there is crazy, man. The atmosphere, atmosphere there and, uh, on the night games, man, it's crazy, man. It's out the roof, man. Uh, and I hope they, they can bring the same momentum this Saturday when we play Clemson. Now, are you a, a Darude fan? Do you know anything about Darude before Saturday night? Oh, no, I know who <laughs> no. <we> was. <laughs> they seemed to have a good time. He seemed to really get the get the crowd going. It uh, kind of ended up turning just a little bit of a rave there. Oh, yeah, man, for sure, man. They, they cry, they never stop, man. They kept it from the first quarter to the last, man. X, let's go over. I know you hit on this in the post-game uh, press conference when you were sitting by Spencer, but uh, so you've already kind of commented on this, but a lot of our listeners may maybe didn't hear. Let's break down that that final play game-winning touchdown pass um just tell us what you saw i know you mentioned like you saw how the db oh, yeah, was the DB, playing yeah, the yeah, yeah. Of the db man I, I see he was already turned man and i knew all i had to do was attack his feet and get on his toes man as soon as i made that step that break over it was over with man and spencer just put it in the right spot he put it up for me to go get it spencer said he didn't even really see where you were he just <laughs> yeah. kind of threw it to a spot <laughs> hey man, that's 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 like uh, most of memory man we worked that play on thursday man and hey, he put it in the right spot what, what is it like to catch passes this is your touchdown right here by the way we're watching it uh what is it like to, t- to catch passes from seven uh, and just knowing you got a guy that is going to get the ball out to you you know te- teams all around the country i think would would love to have that guy quarterback in their football team what is it like to be here and to go through this entire offseason with Spencer and now have it really paying off for both of you guys on the field oh man well we've seen this thing firsthand man this spring ball man Spencer man he's a great quarterback man uh him on the field man hey okay. there's no doubt in my mind that he uh, he's gonna let me down man uh he's a great he's a great person as well man uh, but him on the field he's a threat he's a threat man. how long did it take you to kind of Develop that right chemistry with Spencer Rattler to have the connection that you guys have up to this point. Oh um, man, I really say the chemistry started on the our prep uh, for the bowl game when we played Notre Dame. Those 14 practices, man, I say that's when it started, man. Uh, we was clicking then, and uh, you see uh, that bowl game. I had a good game as well. Oh yes, you yeah. did. <laughs> oh yeah, and then going through spring ball, man, we just kept continuing to strive with it, and uh, even through fall camp. <clears throat> and now, man, we're here with the season, and y'all see. It. I know that uh, the coaching staff, you know Spencer Rattler, Beamer, Dow Loggins, they have all talked about your work ethic and how you know you've really come in here and, and earned it, and that they're not surprised by your success because of how hard you work. I think coaches have mentioned you're the hardest working guy on the team. You're, you know, setting an example for the young guys like Nick mm-hmm. Harbor um, and some of the other younger receivers. Where did you get that from? Just that work ethic and, the, and that drive. Oh man, I just had to tell myself I can't cheat the preparation, man, and. Uh, you know, as long as I can do it all through the week, I know it'll fall good for me on Saturday. So I just can't cheat the preparation. Now, it sounds like they're having to drag you away sometimes when it comes to limiting your reps a little bit. You don't want to take any of those reps off, right? Yeah, man, I can't do it, man. I, I like to see the ball. I like to see myself making them plays, man. So it'll be easy for me on Saturday. You, you talked about the bowl game, and, and you had an <laughs> obviously crazy play in, in that game as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've talked about it in the press conferences, but um, – that that's maybe the most difficult catch I think I've seen you make in your career. So what can you tell us about both sides of that play? Spencer throws it on the run. You got your foot down. You're reaching up. Like did did you did you know you had a shot at that pass when Spencer threw it, or were you just like, let oh, me oh. just give it my best? Oh man, uh, any ball that's in the air, man, I'm trying to come down <laughs> with it, man. But uh, <clears throat> but me for is like catching it how I caught it. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think I was gonna have to catch it like that. Like. <laughs> Yeah, man, and I knew I was close to the sideline, so I had to put my one foot down. Did, did you know your foot was down, oh, like, yeah. when it oh, hit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It? oh, yeah, if you watch the video, you can see how I, I was going to put the left down when I brought the right <laughs> one back. 
it, that, that's something that always amazes me when it comes to receivers, whether it be in the end zone or anywhere near the sidelines, just having that, like, control and thought process to know where your feet are near those white lines. Like, how long does it take to generate that as a wide receiver, to have a presence of mind to be able to get that foot down, even when you're w- focusing on 10,000 other things in the process of a catch? Oh, man, really, man, we work those things, man. Uh, we work those small things. Coach Step, man, he does a good job with us working those things like that, man. Yeah, so – when you were in high school, X, you uh, high school quarterback, right? So no, I only played quarterback my senior year. Senior year, yes, so you sir. were playing rec- only receiver before that. Yes, sir. I, play, play I, I played DB and safety as well. DB and safety. Yes, sir. You still feel like you could play at a high level if we stuck you at DB. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. man. Hey, you put me at safety though. I don't know about if I could be at cornerback. <laughs> it's kind of hard playing against receivers that move like me. Yeah, yeah. I can't be on the island by myself like that. <laughs> Braswell's in at the tailback spot. Rattler working out of the shotgun. Kentucky looking like they want to blitz. And two seconds left on the play clock. They get it off. Rattler in the pocket. In route to Lacan. Touchdown, Touchdown, Touchdown Carolina. Touchdown Xavier Lacan. Are you kidding me? Rattler again comes through at Leas Bryce Stadium. People in his face and he guns it 17 yards to number 17. Their second hookup on the night, and with 7.44 to go in the ball game, the extra point could make it 17-14 Carolina. Stop. Boom! All right, welcome back in. It is the Garnet Trust Hour. Tyler West and Chris broadcasting live out at Firehouse Sub 633 Main Street, hanging out with Xavier Leggett here uh, for today's edition of the Garnet Trust Hour. That was Todd and Tommy on the call on Saturday night for that second touchdown that helped South Carolina to that 17-14 to victory over Kentucky. Do, have you ever heard the radio calls before? Those guys get pretty hyped up. <laughs> oh, no, man, I never heard of that. <laughs> Xavier, um, we were just looking at your first touchdown catch of the day. You uh, kind of, I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know how to say it, man. The, the DB basically was done for on, on that one. You, you want to talk us through that play just a little bit? You don't have to give us the play design, but yeah. I, I know you kind of put a little move on him. He uh, completely, I guess, sold out and uh, was done for, and then Spencer put it on you. We were watching it a second ago, but. Um, what happened on that play from your perspective? Oh, man. So it, it was a double move, man. And mm-hmm. I, I could have sold the move a little more, but the DB, he was already falling for it, man. So I say, man, I already got him. I just shot for the touchdown. How, how much, um, when you're running a route, how much are you sort of trying to go ahead and get a feel for leverage on the defensive back, for whether he's already, especially a double move. So if, if you know you kind of got a sense, all right, he's already bit on my first move so I can go ahead and kind of take that next step. Mm-hmm. How big a part of that is it is in terms of route running? Uh, well, so when I'm running routes, man, I, I, I just try to play it out as let me beat this guy to this spot. So whatever leverage he's playing, I have mm-hmm. a move I have a move for every leverage that, that uh, DB is going to show. So I just try to beat him to the spot that I'm trying to get to. What was the biggest adjustment? You know, you mentioned you had played wide receiver in high school and kind of moved over to quarterback for your senior season of high school. But from high school to the SEC, what's the biggest transition and, like, what's your biggest growth? Is it, like, just learning how to run routes better? Oh, yeah, learning how to run routes better, man, and even, like, getting better with the timing of the game. Uh, from high school to college, the game is way much faster, man. And uh, I feel like I learned a lot. And what helped me from high school while playing quarterback was, like, being able to dissect, like, coverages that defense are showing. And we talk about your work ethic and one not wanting to take any reps off in practice. You know, you're so far into your college career now. What are you still working on? What are you still continuing to improve and get better out even this far into your career? Never get too lazy to keep doing the right things, man. Uh, I just want to keep striving, man, because it's always room to get better. Xavier, let's, if we look back, let, let's go back to the recruiting process with you picking South Carolina. Uh, what was that process like now that you're, what, five years removed from it? Yeah. You know, you you, def, you probably didn't have the offer list that you should have given what type of player you are, oh, yeah. but you had South Carolina, Tennessee, a bunch of others after you. What do you remember about recruiting and, and picking South Carolina, choosing to uh, stay home? Man, what, what made me choose South Carolina, man, was uh, Coach B-Mac and Muschamp, man. Yeah. I built a relationship with those guys, man, and I felt like this was home for me. 
And uh, even like we talked before, the atmosphere for the games, man. Uh, I came to at least five games, and the atmosphere was crazy at each one of them. I came to the Missouri game when it rained that time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, it, folks were still out there, man. The fans yeah. never left. Uh, and, uh, like, knowing that, man, I knew, like, this was the one for me. Did, uh, did you hang out in the rain, or did you seek cover? Uh, uh, <laughs> at, at first I was out there, but I couldn't get too wet. I, I, I went back in. Yeah, that that was wild, man. Have you Have you let yourself stop to think? that this will be your final game at williams Bryce Stadium coming oh, up? Man, I've been thinking about it this morning, man. Like, uh, this is my last one, and I want to make the best out of it. A- against Clemson as well? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Hey, I can't, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons I came as well, man. Uh, this, it's an in-state rival, man, and it's a big It's been big since, for a long time. I, I know a lot of Gamecock fans out there would do anything to put on a jersey and to run out to 2001, y'all's entrance with the fans going crazy. What, what is that moment like when you kind of step into the arena? You know, all the preparation is done. Now it's time to go make plays. Uh, and you kind of first come out of that tunnel and look out there, and there's just people everywhere going nuts. What is that like every Saturday? Oh, man, really, man. Uh, as I, as I, as I, as we, before we run out the tunnel, man, I'm really just looking. But as, I, as I'm running through the smoke and the fire, Man, it's, it's go time, man. And uh, I just hear the crowd just screaming, man. And that's what gave me an urge, man. Uh, and I, I'm just trying to do right. Well. Now, how big of an adjustment is going from playing in Mullins to playing in front of <laughs> 80,000 people at williams Bryce hey, Stadium? Man, it's, it's, it's a big difference, man. <laughs> uh, in Mullins, we're probably playing, against, playing in front of 250 people. And out there, man, it's just a different ball game out there, man. But I never really get – I was never really, like, nervous in front of playing in the, in the crowd, man. I was never nervous. That, sorry, go ahead. I, I was I was actually about to ask you, do you do you get, you know, some guys talk about kind of the the butterflies right before the game, mm-hmm. nerves. Everybody has their own sort of pregame rituals to get comfortable. Uh, so you 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 just not a no, just I, ice ice yeah, your man, veins. I, I try to stay I try to stay even keel with it, man. Never get too hyped about it or never stay down uh, too low. Uh, I just try to stay even keel, man. That's what get that's what helps me play my best game. Do you have a, a pregame routine that you lean on? Like, is is it the same music? Like, are you superstitious? Oh, oh, superstitious? No, no, no? Man, really, I don't even listen to music before no. the games, for real, man. So, as we leave in the hotel before, we're like, well, when we're on the way to the game, I turn on music. But once we're about five minutes from the stadium, I turn it off, and I don't listen to music no more. Just take it all in. It, oh, yeah. it, is it just silence? You <laughs> talking to your teammates? Or are you just locked in? What's I'm, I'm locked in, man. Uh, if if – like, I need to have a conversation within the guys. I'll talk to them mm-hmm. before. It's like just listening to music and going on the field pregame warm up with the headphones on. I don't use. Now, when you're on the field, you're obviously a, a pretty soft spoken guy. When you're on the field, you trash talk a lot. You just let your play speak <laughs> oh, for yeah, itself. Man, How I does let it the go? Play speak for itself, man. Uh, this weekend, man, we had a couple guys out there trying to talk. I saw him chirping at yeah, you. Yeah, man. Uh, I tell them, boy, man, just play, man. You show me, show me, you, show me you're going to do what you're talking about. <laughs> So you don't chirp back. No, man, I ain't got too much to say, man. I'm just trying to ball. <laughs> I, I respect that, man. I respect that. Uh, looking back at your career here at South Carolina, it's been well documented. Only a handful of receptions going into those last couple games of last season. I mean, how hard was it for you to go through those couple years where you're not, you know, being as involved in the offense, not getting a lot of production, and then to just, you know, rock it into this great receiver that you've become this year? Like, what's that process been like for you? Oh, man, really, man, I just see it as opportunity, man. Uh, and, you know, uh, my first couple of years, I've been battling with a couple of injuries, man. And I, I wouldn't say that, uh, like, the coaches that was here had a problem with it, man. I just put it all on me with the injuries that I had, and it had, it took me away from football. What has it been like uh, year one, Dowell Loggins' offense? Seems like Spencer Rattler has really, really liked it, um, is playing really well in it. And, obviously, you've had a great year playing – for Dowell Loggins as well. So what is it like, you know, playing in his offense? Oh, man, his offense is great, man. Uh, he, he do a great job with uh, putting us up against matchups, man. It's a whole lot of mismatches with us, man. Uh, he, he moved me to the slot. He keep me outside. He even had me a running back <laughs> last game. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I, I love the things that he's doing with his offense, man. Yeah, I was actually about to ask you about that play. I think it's coming up here shortly on our little review of the game we got going. Uh, it was a second and one, maybe or second and short. I don't, I don't know. But you, you had a fir- you had a carry for a first down. Uh, how, do, how did you like being in the backfield? I, they've lined you up there a couple of times this year, but I think it's more 
for mismatches in the past game. Mm -hmm. This was a straight oh, yeah. handoff. What oh, did yeah. you think of that? Oh, man, hey, it was great, man. Really, man, we were supposed to have been put that in, man. Uh, uh -huh. we, we was working that in, in fall camp, man. Uh, but uh, I guess he sees something that, uh, that they defense lack, uh, and he put me back up. We, we also saw some Lenore Sellers in there a couple times this week. Uh, what, what have you – give us – Give us the, the insight. You see him every day in practice. A lot of people around here are excited about this guy moving forward as he sort of gets into the program the next couple of years. What, what do you see from Lenore Sellers every day in practice? Oh, man, he's a dog, man. He, he, he's the type of quarterback that this program needs, man. Uh, he's a dual threat quarterback, man. Uh, he's he going to be a great one. Obviously mentioned uh, Nick Carver a moment ago, and obviously a lot of hype about him coming as a five-star guy. And he's somebody that we obviously know has had to learn the wide receiver position as the season co has come along with the injuries and stuff. He's been asked to do a lot more as the season has come along. In your eyes, how much have you seen him progress in just the short time that he's been on campus so far? And, and you know, what do you think we can expect from him in years to come? Oh, man, he's progressing really well, man. And uh, I'm going to help the whole receiver room as much as I can this summer and through many years of, in their future, man. Uh, but Nick Harbour, man, he's going to be a great player. I don't, I don't think we've gotten to, uh, gotten you to weigh in on, on all the, the, like the racing that was going on in the off season. Did you <laughs> see Nikki and and uh, Marion Brown's race? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Don't worry, I got something coming for for Nikki and okay. Warren coming up this December before I take off. Oh, are you okay? Oh, yeah. So okay. we got something on the can, books. Then. Can we get a can we get an invite? Yeah, we need an invite. We need to see this. Oh yeah, man. Who, who's who's in the lineup? All right, so you, AB. Mm -hmm. No, no, Nick, no. I, no I, I already, already beat AB. Uh, oh, 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 that was oh, already done. We man. didn't know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just gonna be Nick Emanuel and Nick Harbin if he want to get in. How, all right, how far? Forty. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my race, 40 yards. Okay. Uh, it's a 40 to 50. Anything after that, Nick Harbour can Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, that's yeah. when he really starts to yeah. get his stride yeah. a little bit. I, yeah. I like the strategy there. That's a good 200? Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, well, I was we, gonna we say. only going for 40 to 50. They're my races. Anything <laughs> after that, he can have that. In the world of football, people only care about the 40 yard yeah, dash. That's all that matters, that right? Yeah. Yeah. And really and truly, I already beat Nick Harbour 40 yards. Really and truly. But uh, I'm going to do it to him again, and, and I hope we have live footage. See, uh, this is another example that X lets his play do the talking. He's exactly. not out there filming it and putting it on social. He just beats people and just leaves it. Hey. Yep. When, when when did all this happen? Uh, so so in uh, like winter workouts, we'll like do races on Thursdays, and I had them boy lined up. They they want to talk trash. I say line up. <laughs> Obviously, you were kind of thrust into the spotlight, even more so with Juice Wells not being able to play, but a handful of snaps this season. And obviously, you've stepped up to the task. Have you exceeded maybe even your own expectations for what you thought you could do this season? Oh, yeah, man. Everything that I'm doing right now is what I wanted to do, man. I, I had expectations for myself going into this season of doing the things that, I'm sh that I have shown so far. I, I got a random question for you, man. <laughs> what, what do your friends call you? Like, I know fans – Sometimes they shorten it to X. I've heard people say Zay. What What do you actually go by? Let's like put this on the record. What do you prefer to be called? Um, well, I, I wouldn't necessarily say prefer preferably be called, but a lot of my people call me Zay, bro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Zay, bro. Yeah. All right. What Spence call you? He's Zay. A, yeah, he called me Zay or Zay, bro. Uh, coach, coach uh, yeah. Beamer, he called me Zay, bro. Uh, <laughs> a lot of them call me Zay Bo. Like it's, Zay Bo? It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a lot of different names that we get through, man. What, 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 what is up with everybody trying to do your voice? I was, That's what I, I was just about to That's ask That's what about I want to know, man. I don't know. They, they say I'm, I'm this country guy, man. They, they be trying now, to put, put that on me. Now, does that bother you at all, nah, or nah, you nah. just find it funny? Yeah, man. They, they're Who, crazy. Who's man. is better, uh, Spencer or Dow Loggins? They both got – they both broken it out publicly. I, I, it, it might be D-Lo. He, do, he does He's, it every day, man. Every day? Every oh. day he does. Every time he talking to me, he come back with my voice. <laughs> <see. He's> <laughs> Let me let me just say, I think I think their voices of you are way over the top, exaggerated. Like yeah, he's done, he's yeah like <laughs> you're country sounded, but not. I don't not like they're making yeah, you sound. Yeah, they, I feel yeah, like they, they crazy, man. I don't know, <laughs> man. Does anybody else do one? Oh Does man, anybody everybody, else everybody, everybody on the team yeah, everybody's everybody's got, do got one. Yeah, yeah. Is you, make, you do anybody else's voice? No, nah, I can't nah. do nobody else's voice. Hey, he just lets his play do the talk. That's right. <laughs> let's just speak for itself. So you do have, you know, man, I know you're fully focused on uh, the game Saturday against Clemson finishing out strong, but what does it feel like to know that you've got 
the NFL around the corner and like a professional career around the corner. Oh man, really, man. I don't even try to think about yeah. it, man. I just keep telling myself it's blurry, man. It's out there, but I just can't see it yet, man. Uh, I don't want to get too too high horse on myself and start looking too ahead because I'm focused on on the right now factor. Clemson this week, obviously. I, I know you don't want to say maybe too much about the game itself, but we talked about it briefly earlier. Just um, playing your last game here, but but going up against in-state rival, uh, a chance to get bowl eligible. Mm-hmm. What um, what are you maybe looking forward to the most about running out there? Final regular season game at South Carolina. Oh man, going to get this win, man. Uh, as long as we play as hard as I know we can play, we'll come out on top. Now, being an in-state guy from Mullins, what did this rivalry mean to you coming up before you got to South Carolina? Oh, man, really, man. All I knew about it was a big rivalry everybody talked about, man. Uh, Everybody from where I'm from, they either Gamecock or they Clemson, man. And it's big. Did uh, did you grow up pulling for one or the other? Oh, no, man. I was a a road tide and 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 an Oregon duck. Uh, Oregon duck? Yeah. Okay. Who's your favorite duck? Uh, no, nah, Oregon. Yeah. Wait, like which player? Yeah, like well, which, which oh, player? Oh, oh, DeAnthony Thomas. Oh, oh man. yeah, yeah. Man, he was he was oh, a burner, man. What was his nickname? Um, was it burner? No, he had another nickname. DeAnthony oh. Thomas did. I don't know. It, it was some it was some animal or something. I can't remember <laughs> what it was. He's fast. Did I? Um, uh, yeah. Oh, dang it! I know what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. We'll it's it. like we'll a get it. snake did. or something, wasn't it? Did, I can't remember. Did you grow up watching Alshon at South Carolina? I, I watched a little bit of him, man, a little bit of him. Man. I, I just knew, like, he will be on all the highlights that they will put out, like just him high-pointing the ball. You you got a little bit of Alshon to your game. Yep. Thanks now, so. now you're – I mean, you're faster. Yeah. You like, can say it. That's fine. I know. I just <laughs> He's like, uh. I don't think Alshon's listening. But <laughs> you're faster. But there's a little, you know, kind of using using your your body, high pointing the football. Um, I don't know if you've ever thought of that or even care, but he's. I mean, he obviously is the single season leader at South yeah. Carolina for reception yards. Um, you're right there. They say they say I'm sick of time now. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're That's right crazy, behind him. Man. You have 1,187 yards this season. He has 1,517. So you. can Hey, Two go off this performances week. here. You can take that number one spot. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm scribing for it, but I'm not scribing for it at the same time, man. I'm just trying to go out there and play it good, man. Yeah. Now, did you get to meet or talk to him at all when he had his uh, jersey honored a couple weeks back? Yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so, so on Friday um, during our walkthrough, he came and talked to us. Uh, man, we had a, a little mini conversation, nothing too much, man, because that was really my first time meeting him. So mm-hmm. it was just a, a meet and greet at that point. He's a physical specimen yeah. oh yeah man he's huge oh yeah do you have any receivers that in the past or currently that you study to kind of you know watch their route running watch how they move oh yeah man so growing up man i used to watch odell beckham a lot man yeah but then i had to realize to myself i'm not the same size as <laughs> yeah. so i did man i started watching like keenan allen uh oh, yeah uh metcalf guys like that man uh, bigger size guy Devonte smith and uh Devontae adams as well and uh, just trying to see, like, how could I put – they play with mine. That's the comp that people seem to make the most to you is DK Metcalf, which pretty good comp. It's pretty good pretty, comparison, man. Pretty good company there. Yeah, man. There have been some great receivers at South Carolina, though. I mean, talk about who, – who else on that list, Tyler? You got probably Sydney Rice. Yeah, Sydney Farrow Rice, Cooper, Farrow Cooper, Sterling Sharp. Sterling Sharp. Sydney Rice is on there twice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> man, are you a newest crazy man? So one, like it done been about two times I've been working out in Charlotte, and Fair Cooper was there. I didn't even know it was him. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I thought he was like I, I kept hearing his name while I've been here. I thought he was a bigger receiver. He he really not that big. No, he he's not. He's yeah. a much different type. I mean, there's a lot of bigger receivers on that list. That you mm. know, Sidney Rice, yourself, Pharaoh though. He, he was an interesting player because, and hopefully he's not listening, I'll say this, like he had a very interesting running style, you know what I mean? Like when he when he moved, it didn't always look incredibly smooth, but he was really good, man. Did, did you end up talking to him? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We talked. Um, cool, I, dude. I had my uh, my Carolina uh, workout yeah. stuff on. He like, man, you go there? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he like, but I used to play though. I said, where your name is? He's like, I'm Phil Coop. I say, no, nah, man, I didn't heard a lot about you, man. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't ever put a face to the name, though, until that day. 
away from the field. What, what are you doing in your free time? What do you like to do to have fun? Oh, man, I like to go hunting, man. I ride four wheelers, dirt bikes, motorcycles, and things like that. I'm more on, like, the wildlife side. Now, uh, so you, anything outside. You hanging out with Trey and Josh doing this? Because they're pretty outdoorsy, too. <laughs> oh, no, nah, man. I, I do my own thing back home, man. But uh, I, I want to take those guys back to my hometown and, and show them what, how we do it back home. Are you a deer hunter? Is oh, that what you like deer, to get? Deer, coon, wild hog as well. I'm oh. very interested in hog hunting. I, I've been watching some videos on it. It looks fun. Oh, yeah, man. It's great, man. Hey, but the, th the things can hurt you, though, man. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. You got any uh, trophies from your hunts? Oh, no, nah, man. Nah, <laughs> now you don't nah, keep anything? Nah, nah, nothing like that. Nothing like that. First time I ever talked to Josh Simon, he picked up the phone, and he was rabbit hunting. True. Yeah. So y'all should, should get together go hunting a little bit. Oh, he's yeah. out, He was out in uh, wherever he, uh, Sumter, I guess. He's probably out in Sumter in the woods yeah. doing a little hunting. Dalzell, out in the Dalzell, middle of nowhere. That's right. Out Dalzell. Uh, so, uh, other sports growing up? Oh, you yeah, baseball and basketball as well. A little bit of everything? Oh, baseball. Yeah, man. What, what did you play in baseball? Uh, shortstop, I pitched, third base, and center field. A little All bit of everything. Once? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All at once. Shortstop, <laughs> um, huh? Yeah, man. Well, probably. pretty good? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah? Oh, yeah, I was good, man. I really, I would say, man, that was really my best sport, man, but – uh. I just had the opportunity, and I was blessed to get the scholarship for football. I'm glad you said basketball. There's a question we ask every football player that we have on here yeah. to name a starting five based on guys on the team if you're putting together a basketball squad. Uh, Who's going to uh, be on your team? It, do do uh, you still hoop? Like, do you still play basketball or not really? Uh, no, nah, not for real. Not for real, <laughs> man. Uh, so, in the off season, man, we'll go to the Strom right here, and we'll play a couple of pickup games, man, but – my starting five will probably be Uncle Hemingway, okay. T.J. Sanders, uh, Kylie Horton. Uh, really, man, everybody else that's been good and Lil. Uh, Eddie, <laughs> oh, Lu man. Eddie Lewis uh -oh. keeps telling me that he good, man, so I'll have to see how he play before I pick him. <laughs> uh, you know I'm going to have me on there as well, so I really just I really just got four right now, man. We're looking Ooh. for a fifth guy. Spence okay, is not going to be happy about getting left off of that uh, list. Oh, 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 I forgot about Spence. Spence was good in high school. Yeah, yeah. I, nice. I, I, I'll pick Spence, though. I'll pick Spence. He can run and go up. You seen his highlight tape oh, yeah, from yeah, high yeah. school? Oh, yeah. He got kind of mad at me, I think, because um, <laughs> I was watching his highlight tape, and he was dishing all these assists. I was like, kind of like a quarterback, you're pass first. And he's like, no, nah, I'm score first. And I was like, okay. <laughs> but they won state. He they said, won. I'm not a pass he's first. Like, not pass first. I'm I, yeah, I forgot about Smith, man. I did see his highlight tape, man. He, he can shoot that thing a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do appreciate that you put the big boys in there, too. Yeah. You got Tonka in there, oh, TJ yeah. in there. A lot of the guys – go to their position group that we've asked. So, I mean, Tonka – or no, Boogie had about five defensive tackles out there <laughs> playing basketball, I think, on his team. The the DBs, I think Nick went with almost all DBs. Nick, yeah. he did. But I like – you got a little yeah. versatile group. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that might yeah. be the best collective five that we've gotten because you got a good distribution mm -hmm. across oh, the yeah. board there. Right. I played against Tonka Hemingway and TJ Sanders in high school, man. Uh, those guys was good. So you probably had trouble getting to the paint on those guys. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who who was better between Tonka and TJ uh, at basketball? I, I'll, I'll maybe say TJ. TJ, he can, he can move a little bit different on that court, man. TJ, he got a motor to him, man. He, he good. And yeah, he, was a, he was a little smaller back then, so he can really move. <laughs> much smaller. <laughs> About a, a hundred pounds smaller. <laughs> <laughs> TJ – no, I saw him play basketball in high school. He was smooth yeah, okay. in yeah, high school. He, he yeah, dribbled that thing. He could pull over, hit you with a jump shot. He could even go from the three-point line with it. Nice. Oh, yeah. But uh, Tonka is like you. He played three sports mm -hmm. in, in high school as well, football, mm -hmm. baseball, and basketball, and was good at, at all three, too. Oh, yeah, so. man. Uh, Tonka, he was really great in baseball as well, man. I, uh, I played against him on a couple circuit baseball teams. It was good. What What do you think? You said baseball might have been your best sport, which is eye opening. What What do you think if you would have gone to like college or pro route and that? Like, what position? Because you played like six different positions. What would you have focused in on? Maybe you Maybe center field. Center field. Yeah, okay. I can see that. Speedster. That Some makes range sense. Out there. Oh, you have yeah. a You have a favorite baseball player? Uh, DG and A Rod. Okay. Oh yeah. Your Yankees guy. Oh, yeah. oh, oh man. man! Oh man! Come on, Zabo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh man, well, dude, this has been fun. We're glad we got to have you out. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, man. Uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, again, what's going to be your final game at williams Bryce Stadium. If you had to kind of sum up your whole time here at South Carolina, what's what's your recap? Oh, man, I don't know, man. It's a lot to go for, man. I don't know. I can't really pinpoint just one thing. What's your, um, you know, obviously you came in with, with Coach Bunchchamp back in, in 2019. What was that transition like going from – that a regime to Beamer coming in, and, and what's your relationship with with Coach Beamer been like in these years that he's been your coach? Oh man, I built a great relationship with Coach Beamer, man. I, I really, really, I wouldn't say it's really not even too much of a big difference, man. They both great coaches, man. And uh, like you said, uh, I just built, when Coach Beamer came in, I built a, a tight relationship with him, man. He's my guy. Now, how many times has he like jumped on you after scoring touchdowns? Because he like I think was the first one to meet you after that touchdown on Saturday night. Like I I've never seen a coach get as excited as Beamer does about stuff oh, like yeah, that. Man, coach Beamer, man, hey, he, he brings the excitement to us, man. It's within us, man. Uh, I love that about him, man. Uh, he's he's a great guy to be around. He seems to do a really good job of uh, keeping y'all engaged. You know, like the month of November, y'all y'all been really good. Obviously, this month past couple seasons some people maybe you know written y'all off and everything and y'all respond you know think about the last year like Tennessee game you know after Florida and all that stuff um but what what do y'all how, how do y'all what do you attribute that to like in the locker room with the coaches the players y'all just continue like staying in the fight and oh yeah man uh, we, we never put our head down man after all those losses that we had back to back man uh we just try to stay continue and keep striving within the season because it was a whole lot of it's still a whole lot more football for us to go man we win this game we still have a bowl game mm -hmm. well x we got about 60 seconds here want to thank you so much for hanging out with us on today's edition of the garner trust hour it's obviously been a thrill to watch you here at south carolina excited for your final game at williams bryce on saturday night and man we're excited to see what you're going to do at the next level too because you've got a, a great career ahead of you